You're listening to the Chapter a Day Audio Bible. I'm John Stonge, and today we're in 1 Samuel chapter 26. And this is what we read. Now some men from Ziph came to Saul at Gibeah to tell him, David is hiding on the hill of Hekelah, which overlooks Jeshimon. So Saul took 3,000 of Israel's elite troops and went to hunt him down in the wilderness of Ziph. Saul camped along the road beside the hill of Aquila near Jeshimon, where David was hiding. When David learned that Saul had come after him into the wilderness, he sent out spies to verify the report of Saul's arrival. David slipped over to Saul's camp one night to look around. Saul and Abner, son of Ner, the commander of his army, were sleeping inside a ring formed by the slumbering warriors. Who will volunteer to go in there with me? David asked Ahimelech the Hittite and Abishai, son of Zariah, Joab's brother. I'll go with you, Abishai replied. So David and Abishai went right into Saul's camp and found him asleep with his spear stuck in the ground beside his head. Abner and the soldiers were lying asleep around him. God has surely handed your enemy over to you this time, Abishai whispered to David. Let me pin him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I won't need to strike twice. No, David said, don't kill him. For who can remain innocent after attacking the Lord's anointed one? Surely the Lord will strike Saul down someday, or he will die of old age or in battle. The Lord forbid that I should kill the one he has anointed. But take his spear and that jug of water beside his head, and then let's get out of here. So David took the spear and jug of water that were near Saul's head. Then he and Abishai got away without anyone seeing them or even waking up, because the Lord had put Saul's men into a deep sleep. David climbed the hill opposite the camp until he was at a safe distance. Then he shouted down to the soldiers and to Abner, son of Ner, Wake up, Abner! Who is it? Abner demanded. Well, Abner, you're a great man, aren't you? David taunted. Where in all Israel is there anyone as mighty? So why haven't you guarded your master the king when someone came to kill him? This isn't good at all. I swear by the Lord that you and your men deserve to die because you failed to protect your master, the Lord's anointed. Look around. Where are the king's spear and the jug of water that were beside his head? Saul recognized David's voice and called out, Is that you, my son David? And David replied, Yes, my lord the king. Why are you chasing me? What have I done? What is my crime? But now let my lord the king listen to his servant. If the Lord has stirred you up against me, then let him accept my offering. But if this is simply a human scheme, then may those involved be cursed by the Lord. For they have driven me from my home so I can no longer live among the Lord's people. And they have said, Go worship pagan gods. Must I die on foreign soil far from the presence of the Lord? Why has the king of Israel come out to search for a single flea? Why does he hunt me down like a partridge on the mountains? Then Saul confessed, I have sinned. Come back home, my son, and I will no longer try to harm you, for you valued my life today. I have been a fool and very, very wrong. Here is your spear, O king, David replied. Let one of your young men come over and get it. The Lord gives his own reward for doing good and for being loyal, and I refuse to kill you even when the Lord placed you in my power, for you are the Lord's anointed one. Now may the Lord value my life, even as I have valued yours today. May he rescue me from all my troubles. And Saul said to David, Blessings on you, my son David. You will do many heroic deeds, and you will surely succeed. Then David went away, and Saul returned home. Let's pray. 
Lord, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for the privilege to be able to look at this portion of Scripture and to continue to see how this relationship with Saul and David developed. Lord, chapter after chapter, we've been seeing Saul pursue David, trying to take his life, showing no respect for the fact that you anointed David to be the future king over Israel. Yet David shows respect towards Saul, and as he does so, Lord, he's ultimately showing respect toward you because you anointed Saul to be king. And David expresses that it's not his desire to lift his hand against the Lord's anointed one. Lord, it's interesting when we look into the New Testament and we see that your anointed one, Jesus Christ, came to this earth to rescue humanity, and he is our ultimate king, our ultimate Lord, our Messiah and Savior. And we could see when we look in the Gospels that there were many that sought to lift their hand against him with no remorse for seeking to take the life of the anointed one of God. But Lord, we see how that all developed for your glory and for our good, as Jesus Christ, your Son, came to this earth bearing our sin upon himself at the cross, dying to pay for our sin, and then defeating the power of sin as he rose from the grave. Lord, we're grateful for all that that means. We're grateful for all that that displays and for how that connects to our relationship with you and our future with you. And Lord, just as it says in this passage that we looked at today, we know, Lord, that you are the one who rescues us from our troubles. David knew that to be true, and Lord, the longer we follow you and live in a relationship with you, the more we come to know that to be true as well. So Lord, we commit our troubles today to you. We commit our concerns. We commit our needs. And we thank you for your presence with us. We pray that by your grace that we would be empowered to walk faithfully with you today and each and every day. And we know that that's your desire for us. And so, Lord, you do make that provision for us because we are your beloved children. Lord, we commit this day to you. We thank you for being with us in it. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Right now, I have a special gift available at DesireJesus.com for listeners of the podcast. It's a free copy of my book, Healthy. In the book, we examine biblical wisdom for developing our spiritual, physical, emotional, relational, and financial health. So if you'd like some help or encouragement in any of those areas, stop by DesireJesus.com and pick up a free copy of my book, Healthy, while it's available. Thanks again for listening, and have a wonderful day.